Hi friends, I'm at Mr. Arnott on Twitter, and today my objective is to talk to you about the Epson 595WI Interactive Projector. And so, with that, um, we in the Independent School District have a couple different projectors. We have a 585, and then we have the 595. The difference being the model number, which you can see on the projector itself. And then the 595s have this touch module on it as well which means it will allow you to interact on your board with a touch of a finger. The other models, the 585s, only interact with a stylus when I go onto the surface of my screen with my digital ink. Now, every projector should come equipped with a couple of items. Some of those, which would be two styluses that you see here, in those styluses, most of them should have come with a rechargeable battery, and that rechargeable battery could be replaced with just a standard AA. In most cases, we had a uh, charging station for those batteries as well that should be somewhere around your room. There's also a nice little case that your styluses can fit in, which is magnetic, which might be on your board for you to stow those kinds of items. There's also a remote that should have come with it. Sometimes those remotes, when the installers have put them in, are going to be on top of the touch module because there's a nice little shelf area there. So you could also look by the teacher work area to try to find it. Now, the projector remote has a couple of items that I think are worthy of your time. When we look at our remote, at the bottom left, there is an AV mute button. When I click that AV mute button, it's going to turn my projector in a mute uh, setting and then I can go to lunch or just turn off the bulb so that I don't waste the bulb life. There's also a freeze button. If I wanted to freeze my screen, I could, so then I could do whatever it else I need to do on my PC, like take my attendance, etc. The other one I'd like to turn your attention to for troubleshooting purposes is the menu button. When I click the menu button, I've got some options that come up on my screen. I'm going to scroll down using the navigational arrows to extended and go to easy interactive function. And you'll notice that there is a spot for auto calibration or manual calibration. In most cases, auto calibration is going to be just fine and I found it to be very effective. But in certain weird scenarios, you might try manual calibration. Now what I do is when I click enter on auto calibration and tell it OK, it's going to calibrate the stream of light to the surface that it is projecting to so that your device or your stylus will be tracking on the board like it's supposed to. So in some of those scenarios like when you're trying to write and then the ink is just a little bit off, maybe an inch off because I'm in a room with a classroom above me and there's lots of shaking going on which could uh, affect the placement of the projector, then you might have to go in and calibrate your actual projector. Then you can test it by going along your screen. This one seems to be tracking quite well, so I'm happy with its orientation. So there's the projector and its remote. When I go down on my screen, one of the most important areas is this little icon down here. Currently, I am in an annotation mode. When I'm in annotation mode, the stylus interacts like digital ink on the surface. If I click this little tool here, there are lots of other things and tools that I can use when I'm in that inking mode. I'm going to go ahead and erase everything so that we can just kind of start from scratch. Now there is a button for me to click to hide my tools. Those tools also exist on the other side of my board if it's appropriate for me to teach from this end. But going back, I also have a button for the angle at which you write. So if I'm writing at a 45 degree angle, then I would keep it where it is here. If I want a perpendicular because I'm more of a 90 degree angle to the board as I write, then I can choose that particular button. The three buttons above here will indicate what the styluses are set to. So I have the yellow stylus right now. My yellow stylus is a red um, ink right now, or I could change it. Now it's changed to blue if I were to ink on my surface. There is also 
the finger on the 595 model, which is set to a highlighter right now, so I could use and interact just by touching the board with my finger. I also have the option to write with two at once. I could do two fingers at once, or I could do a stylus and a finger, or two styluses at once. Also, above that, we have the erase everything button. You would have to tell it yes to start with your new whiteboard skin. You have an eraser, so if I'm writing and I come in here to the eraser, I could use it to do a fine tuning of an erasing type of action. Above that, we have the other inking tools and a highlighter. If I click on the little arrow, I can adjust the thickness of my highlighter. Oh, and I actually clicked a different line. Oh, I'm set to the purple one. I'm gonna go back to the yellow and I'm gonna to go to a different thickness so that I have that thickness of highlighter. I can go to my line tool and it has its own menu of items too. I can go to a thicker teal color if I wanted to write with my thicker teal color and use the palette that exists there. One of the really cool features of this projector I think is the skins button. When I click that skins button I can go to a lined paper backdrop very easily and efficiently or I could go to my uh, graph paper as well to plot my points and do whatever it is I need to do. The other skins that exist are an inverted image, so now I have the black backdrop instead, and I've got the black backdrop with line paper or the graph paper as well. I'm going to go back to standard white and erase all that. We have an undo and a redo function that exists here as well, so I could click on the undo and then it gets rid of or brings back the last mark that I have just gone through. I'm in the whiteboard mode right now. I could, however, switch to the PC annotation mode. And when I click on the PC annotation mode, it should be showing my computer screen right now. If it gives you issues, you could click on the source search of your projector remote and then I've had good luck with it finding the computer like it's supposed to. So I've got some inking marks on my website right now, and I could do this all day long with the Epson tools that exist right here. If I wanted to interact with this as a mouse, I would need to click on this little icon and go to the mouse mode, which has the little mouse there. And I'm gonna try it one more time. And it switches the mode of the stylus now to being a mouse, which would allow me to interact on my screen as a mouse click. If it's appropriate for you to do a right mouse click, you could press the button on the stylus and then hit your board and it gives you the right click mouse options. Now those all come standard and should be good to go. If your mouse mode isn't working, sometimes there's a USB cord that has to be plugged into your dock station or your computer, so that's something to check. But after that, you have the Epson software, and the Epson software could be advantageous if you want to collect the annotations that you have built. If you are likely to just want a surface to write very quickly on, the tools I showed you are perfectly fine and okay. Um, I also have friends who use other inking softwares. You could go into Microsoft and use Microsoft's inking tools with the stylus set as a mouse mode and just use those other providers tools or Smart Notebook and others that are out there and exist. So after, um, beyond those though, um, if you go to your start menu and you went to all programs, and then there's an Epson projector folder. The Easy Interactive Tools might show there. If you don't have the Easy Interactive Tools at the Independent School District, we can go to our Software Center, and then that's gonna be an icon on our desktop, and um, we can click Find Additional Applications in the Application Catalog, type the word Epson, and it will be one of your options that you can click on and click Install. That requires no technician's rights. Our teachers can do that. 
If I'm at home and it's on my personal computer, I can just download that off of Epson's website as well. So I have one of the versions of Easy Interactive Tools. This happens to be an older version, but it works much the same in some of the newer ones. When you go in, you have the option to record the desktop animations that you do, or you re could record the whiteboard annotations that you do. I'm gonna start with a whiteboard annotation, so I'm gonna click on New. I have a couple of other tools that are going to exist. So the first one is I can have this as my slide one. If I need to make another slide, I need to go to a mouse cursor and then to a new slide. Now this could be my slide two. And if I go back to my mouse mode, I can look at those set of slides. I have slide one and I have slide two. I can save that now for the purpose of sharing to others later. If I go to the save button, I prefer the save as. It will save it as an Epson file by default. And if I want to share that with a parent, I'm not sure that the parent's gonna have that Epson software. So I would more likely want to save it as a JPEG that I could share with them or as a PDF that I could share with them later as well. Those will go into an easy interactive folder. If you don't like that location, you can always change locations and save them on your desktop. The other option is when you go in, and I'm gonna go back to the home screen, we could do a desktop animation instead. And so if this was my desktop or if I had a website open, I could make my annotations and then I could save those annotations when I'm finished. So if this is the annotation I've done and I want to save it, I would need to click over here and I would go to the mouse and then I could click save and it will save a snapshot of that artwork over top of the application I was working on in the location that I specified. That is in a nutshell the way our projector interacts. Thank you for your time and enjoy this new fun tool.